Welcome to Grace Time and good morning. I hope everyone had an amazing Thanksgiving. And guess what? There are five Fridays now before Christmas. We are on the downhill run of 2022 and time marches on. Now, yesterday we were discussing how people will, will be uh, behaving in the last days according to Paul. And we were discussing a few uh, of these that Paul listed out. And uh, today we'll continue examining Paul's warning of the last days. We as humans have become more like toddlers. We want it and we want it now. And people riot over anything nowadays, even if their flights get canceled. And the amazing thing is they're doing different TV shows about when people snap and when they go berserk, when they, you know, they may even maybe kill people, but and because they all because they do not get their own way. Look at the increase of road rage incidents. We are uh, they are shooting at people or ramming their cars into other cars. They are following other drivers home to revenge what they think the other driver did wrong or did wrong to them. And there's even a show that is recording parking parking police giving tickets, having cars towed or being of putting the boot on the tire, and it's all about showing how people react and behave when they realize they are getting a ticket or towed or that boot is being put on their car tire. People sit and watch this stuff, folks, every day. <laughs> so it is appalling behavior that is now entertainment. What used to be news is now being shown for entertainment. And uh, we are seeing so much of it, and it just keeps getting worse, and it's going to keep getting worse and worse. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, and verses 1 through 3, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, Brutal, despisers of good. Okay, so we'll stop there at verse 3 because that's what we're going to focus on a little bit here at first. So we started yesterday going through verse 2 where Paul began to list some of these evil traits associated that I just read with the last days. And now here in verse 3, Paul continues by adding six additional traits to the eight already noted. And here Paul shares that evil people will be uh, unloving or heartless. And in the Greek, it means people who fail to show proper love to maybe children. And it also means those who are inhumane towards each other, okay? And then second, evil people will be unappeasable or unforgiving. And, and in Greek, this means people who refuse to hold agreements and they are irreconcilable. And then third, these wicked people will be slanderous. They will be false accusers. They will lie about others and, and things. The Greek term is diablo, and uh, which is the root word in English for uh, diabolic. And from a Christian standpoint, this is one of the titles of who? Satan. The devil, meaning the one who lies and slanders other people, right? So we got to remember that uh, he's alive and well always and never forget that, right? And uh, we also need to understand that, uh, 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 that the, the Satan is, is a hallmark of this fallen world in a way. It's, it's the tendency to tear others down with gossip, lies, and hateful speech. And that's what Paul's referring to here. And then fourth, these evil people will be without self-control. Self-control is part of the fruit of the Spirit, right? And the presence of self-control is mentioned frequently by Paul as an important trait in the life of a Christian. So what does self-control imply? It implies a person who is not selfish or arrogant. And then now fifth, evil people will be brutal. And now in the Greek, this means they will be savage or untamed. Paul's use of it here might refer to violence, but it certainly implies a wild and uncontrolled attitude. And then sixth, 
Uh, Paul says that evil people will be known for a hatred of godly things or despisers of good. Interestingly, Paul utilizes a word in the Greek that suggests a very personable aspect of hate. So in other words, these evil people do not merely despise goodness. They specifically dislike good people. And this certainly agrees with Jesus' warning to his disciples, if you remember. Do you remember when he told them, those who love God will be hated by the world? And now let me just read 2 uh, Timothy chapter 3 and verse 4. Traitors, headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. So here's some more. One, two, three, four, four more traits. Paul continues to list the traits of evil people right in this verse. So there's four more. And first, evil people will be traitors. This accusation is more focused on one's behavior. Traitors are those who actively work against the interests of their so-called friends or allies. And then second, evil people will be headstrong or the word reckless. This includes the idea of not thinking before acting or acting in a thoughtless manner, if you will. This is the ready, fire, aim mentality, one which is incomplete with higher ideals such as self-control, you see. And then third here, he's mentioning that evil people will be conceited or haughty. This will be people blinded by their own self-worth. And this ties closely to the concepts of arrogance uh, and recklessness mentioned earlier in the passage. Uh, the ungodly often blind themselves through their own actions. And this term is sometimes translated as puffed up with pride. And then fourth, uh, evil people will be more concerned with hedonism and entertainment, uh, lovers of pleasure, right, than the will of God. This is an overwhelmingly common barrier to faith in the gospel. Many people reject the idea of Christianity on the grounds that they would have to give up certain sinful pleasures. And this is, as other, this, as other terms in Paul's list suggest, is a nearsighted, an ignorant assumption. Because in truth, nothing is more freeing than that saving faith in Christ. The New Testament often draws a distinction between the natural sinful behaviors of man and the godly behaviors we are called to as Christians. So evil people count it pleasure to revel in the daytime. Uh, that's some scripture out of uh, 1 Peter. Uh, listen, before knowing Christ, we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures. Yet those who faithfully serve God choose rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin, you see. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. So here we are. Uh, Paul's given us the last one of these uh, attributes, and this is the 19th attribute of evil people in the last days. Paul is warning us about these behaviors and are indicative of a person who is rejecting the will of and wisdom of God, by the way. And this commentary by Paul began in verse 2, as we saw, and it runs as a single sentence through this verse 5. And so here in verse 5, Paul states that evil people are known for putting on the window dressing of faith in God, but rejecting, but rejecting now the actual power of the Holy Spirit. This echoes Paul's condemnation of evil in Titus chapter 1 and verse 16. They profess to know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. Talk is cheap, folks. Uh, talk is cheap. Actions speak. These wicked ones want to be seen as good people, or as spiritual people, or as teachers, but we're not truly following God. And then in 1 Timothy chapter 1, and uh, verses 3 through 7, 
As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed of fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification which is in faith. Now, the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk. And now verse 7, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. So this is a warning about heresy uh, in doctrine and in life, right? And so they had religion, but they did not have a legitimate relationship with God built upon truth. And now 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 16 through 17, I want to share. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. This would also include those who overtly pick and choose, if you will, when to obey God and when to dismiss his message, you see? So after a lengthy description of evil people, Paul gives a blunt application. Avoid such people. So two important observations we can make here. First, this advice is, is in a personal letter to Timothy. So the wicked ones Paul is referring to, right, existed when this letter was written. Paul had specific people in mind uh, whom Timothy was to avoid. And these people could tempt him to sin or to turn him from true teaching. And now, secondly, I want to get into this. Avoiding false teachers is somewhat different than dealing with other people. Uh, Paul clearly taught elsewhere that avoiding absolutely all contact with sinful people is impossible. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 9 through 10, let me read this. I wrote to you in my epistle, let me make sure I'm reading it right, 5, 9 through, I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexual and immoral people, yet I certainly did not mean with the sexual, sexually immoral people of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or idolaters, since they, since then you would need to go out of the world. Now, Paul here, while keep, is stating, while keeping away from immorality is important in, in general, right? But Timothy is to specifically steer clear of those who claim to follow God, yet denied it through their false accusations or false actions and teachings, if you will. It's particularly important for Christians to demonstrate a clear separation from those who claim to be Christian, but whose actions say otherwise. And I'm telling you, you've got to pay attention when you're where you go to church. Uh, you need to be uh, well grounded in the Word of God and to understand where you're attending to ensure that the people that are in leadership uh, and including the pastor, are not having these attributes in which we've covered, uh, that the tr it is a true Bible teaching church, that people are growing spiritually, people are moving from shallow water faith to deep water faith, uh, there, and they begin to just go for God 100%, wholeheartedly serving the Lord. Uh, that's very important. Uh, if they're just sitting like bumps on a log every Sunday, and that's the only time that they get together and do anything, uh, I would caution you. You need to pay attention. You need to be where there is true leadership leading people to spiritually grow, leading people to do things. Uh, and I'm not saying we do works for salvation. We know that's a free gift. But I'm saying that there needs to be movement among the believers, among the Christians. They should be serving one another as well as doing things to bring others to know the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you sit there and it's week in and week out and, and that's it, uh, you need to really evaluate uh, where you're attending and what is happening in your spiritual life. Let's pray together. Holy Father, just thank you again for 
for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us in our lives. And Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. And we just pray that we will just continue to pick up and put these tools in our toolbox and to apply these things in our very lives so that others will see our actions and behaviors and, and see the Lord Jesus Christ in us and through us in this dark, broken, and evil world. And Lord, we just pray for all of the unsaved. We pray that they will come into a understanding, knowledge, and accept and believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And 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 Lord, we just pray that uh, you'll just assist us to continue to have a safe and blessed weekend ahead. And Lord, we just uh, pray all of these things in your Son's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me here on Grace Time. I'm so glad that you did. And listen, uh, again, I, like I said, I didn't, I didn't know if we could get through this today. And we'll be back with this on Monday, but it's okay. It's how we do it, right? Um, and the next thing I'll tell you is uh, if you're ever in North Central Florida, come to Grace Place Inverness. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. Uh, it's a wide open, fun, loving uh a people a family that's just looking to just wholeheartedly serve the Lord. So come visit us. You can go to www.graceplace352.org. That's graceplace352.org. And you can find out everything you want to know about us and come visit us if you're ever in the Central Florida area and to Inverness, Florida. And uh, I'll be back here Monday morning at 10 a.m., the good Lord willing. And until next time, may God bless you.